How you doing everyone? Phil from statisticsmentor.com here. I hope you're ready today for our video on independent samples t-test if I can say it right. Okay, background. Many is a time we need to compare two groups, compare the mean of two groups. For example, in an experimental situation we have a control group and then an ex some kind of experiment where we modify the control group and want to test whether the, what we've done changes the mean of the measurements. Okay, well for comparing two groups there are two kinds of tests, the paired and the independent samples. In this one video we're looking at the independent samples. Now, independent samples is like where each thing, item, is measured just once and there are two groups. Your data should have looked something like this with two columns. One with like the group number, which I've coded here, group one and group two. And the other one, which is scale variable and normally distributed, it's, yes, scale, so it's just numbers, right? Just usual numbers, so it's like the scores. So it should look something like this with two columns. One with a group identifying each measurement which group is it from, one group or the other group and then the other one with measurements and those measurements should be ideally approximately or are normally distributed to run the independent samples t-test. If these scores, if the measurements are not normally, are really far from normality then we use a non-parametric version of the test which is the non -parametric a man Whitney test, all right, but uh, we're, fo we're, we're focusing here on the independent samples t test. Now your lecturers will have probably have a preference. It might show you uh, to uh, show you via graphs whether the data are suggestive of normality, or may show you a test for normality. I'm going to assume that the data are normally distributed, so we go ahead and run the independent samples t-test. We go analyze, compare means, look for independent samples t-test. Now here, test variables, we put the measurements there, so that's our score. The grouping variable, this is the other column that tells you which group they're in, you stick it in there. Now got question marks which you have to fill. Basically these are how have you coded the groups. Well I've coded them 1 and 2. So we define groups and just go 1 and 2. It doesn't matter if you didn't use 1 and 2, you could have used 3, 4, 5, 10, any number, but put those numbers in the groups. Go OK and just press OK and wait. We have two boxes. The first box gives us the summary stats. It tells us that the mean for the control group is about 53.7. Praise group looks 64.2. Anyway, what does it mean? Um, I haven't given you the background here. I'm too excited. The data here is teaching data. It's the control group is one where the usual teaching method is employed and in for one class and in another class of students the, the uh, teacher uses praise, praises the students and then the scores at the end of the semester are measured and these are the mean scores for each class right so there are two classes it's two classes one class is the control group teaching the other class the teacher praises those students so the, hopefully the only difference is that praise, one is praised, one is not praised. Uh, and so this is independent rather than match pairs because you're a student, you're only in one of two classes. So you only measured once your score. Okay. That's why this is independent samples. Right, just say then the praised group looks like the mean score for that is 64. It's higher than the for the control group. I want to test that formally though because what we've seen is only for a sample stat based on about 20 students. So we'll go down here, independent samples t-test. Now, 
first thing we'll have to run, you can see this box here, is Levine's test for the quality of variance. So the null, since it's a test, what is the null? The null hypothesis is that the variance, the population variance, for the two groups are the same. Versus the alternative, it's not. Now, that's the F. The F gives us the p-value for this test. The p-value is 0.48, it's bigger than 0.05, so we do not reject the null. Remember, if p is low, null must go. p is bigger than 0.05, we do not reject the null. Say again. That means, conclude, that we can assume that equal variances, equal variances assumed. That means we read, can continue now, going towards the right, reading the top row, which corresponds to equal variances assumed. Reading the top row for the T and all the other stuff. If we had rejected the null, say the significance was not 0.418, if it's less than 0.05, we'd just continue but read through the bottom bottom, if I can get rid of that horrible yellow box, bottom row of figures, all right? But here we're reading the top row of figures. So the t-stat is 12 point, minus 12.707, degree of freedom, blah, but those two ultimately to get the p-value, which is a two-tailed p-value. Now, the null hypothesis for this t-test is that the, the there is no difference in the means between the two groups versus the alternative that there is a difference, that there is a difference, and that's why this is a two-tailed test. And the p-value is weenie. Remember, p-values on a scale from 0 to 1. So it's less than 0.05, we reject the null. P is low, null must go, using that rule. So we conclude that there is a difference in means. Okay. Moreover, if there's a difference in means, you can see that there, since there's a difference, it must be, and there's only two groups, it must mean one group is bigger than the other. Well, as we've seen here, praise group, the mean is bigger than the control. So we could say that the mean score for praise group is higher than the mean score for the control group. We can also see that we can also make a conclusion by looking at the 95% confidence interval for the difference in the means here. Now, the way they've done it here, look, the mean difference since it's a negative number, and you look at these two figures, it means that they've done here control minus praise rather than praise minus control. Look, so 53.7 minus about 64 gives us a difference of around 10 minus 10 as a plus a plus 10, so it's done control minus praised. If we look at the why we need to know that is because if we look at the confidence interval, both the lower 95% confidence interval, both lower and upper limits, negative numbers, the true difference in mean lies, this 95% confident, that true difference in means lies between lower and upper. Well, if those two numbers are negative, it must mean that you're true, you're true as opposed to the estimated or the sample. The true mean is also negative, and that must for that to happen, it must mean the mean for the praise must be the true mean for the praise must be larger than the true mean of the control. So there we have it. That is the independent samples t-test. So well done if you made it through that.